Good afternoon and welcome to the Namoli Family Stadium on the grounds of the University of Tampa campus. The Spartans in a doubleheader this afternoon taking on the University of North Georgia Nighthawks as the first pitch of this scheduled doubleheader is in for strike one. I'm Bruce Wozniak along with Brandon Davis on a beautiful Thursday afternoon here in Tampa with a game time temperature of 85 degrees. And the starting pitcher for UT this afternoon is Corinne Miner who comes in with a 4-1, and one, one loss record and an ERA of 2.21, a team leading 22 strikeouts thus far. And, Brandon, a big game this afternoon. Big game, big game. A couple of ranked teams here. Yes, yes. Tampa actually moved from number 17 up to number 13 in the, in the conference. And then we have number four ranked North Georgia Nighthawks as they get a single. A base right hit here. to start the game. For the University of North Georgia as Jolie Lester singles from the leadoff position. And the Spartans coming into this game having won four in a row and seven of their last eight. You could say that technically North Georgia has lost two in a row, but that was by virtue of being swept in a doubleheader. As you see... A strike there to the next batter, number well, 44, of, Olivia Sinkfield. Speaking of swept, Bruce, uh, Tampa Spartans actually swept the Ecker Tritons this weekend. Sweeping them Friday and had a doubleheader on Saturday. And here in the top of the first, Corinne Miner gets herself ahead on Sinkfield, 0-2 is the count. Minor you will see is as there's a ball outside. You will see that Corinne Minor is as effective from the pitching circle as she is with the bat on her shoulder and has for the most part been hitting in the cleanup spot so far this season yes. for head coach Leslie Cantor Spartans as the next one is popped to the right field. Oh, and a caught. nice grab by Avery Perkins. A great catch by Perkins, especially looking up into the sun. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough for her with that sun in her eyes. Trust me, I know because I actually play intramural softball, and I play right field, and it's very hard to see. And that'll bring up the number three hitter, Madison Simmons. Follows that one back to the screen. Simmons is a sophomore from Swanee, Georgia. Home plate umpire is Scott Johnson calling the balls and strikes. The 0-1. Ooh, a close one right there. strike two. He just joined us, the leadoff hitter for the Nighthawks. Single to start the game. That was Jolie Lester. Now the 0-2 on the way, and that's up high for ball one. Miner trying to settle in, find her rhythm. I think that the high pitch was definitely a strategy from her to see if she would bait for it, but she did not fall for it as now it's 1-2 count. And well, here's pitch. Strike, Strike three. three. And down goes Simmons with the bat on her shoulder. Never likes <laughs> to strike out looking. Never. But that's the effectiveness of Corinne Miner and something that we've gotten used to seeing throughout her Spartans career as Corinne is a graduate student now. And this brings up the cleanup hitter as the runner is going and the throw down to second Ooh. is going to be bobbled. And so in there safely will be Jolie Lester. And with two outs in the top of the first, the Nighthawks now have a runner in scoring position. So it was, it was a good assistance from Alexa Russo coming from the second base position to try to cover that ball. That way it doesn't go into center field and leads to an overthrow. And now the 0-1 is swung on and fouled back. Out of play, Haley Cummings hitting in the cleanup spot for the visitors this afternoon. One of four left-handed bats. I believe you are left-handed, right? I am. Me too. <laughs> and that one's fact. up high for a ball. And Mike Davenport, the head coach, really mixing up his lineup, showing 
that much of a split with four lefties in his lineup here this afternoon. Uh, that one's going to be fouled out of play behind the UT dugout. We might see some slap hitting since we have a lot of lefty hitters. And that one is outside for ball two. Haley Cummings is hitting 320. Wow. So far this season, one home run, 12 RBI. And now the 2-2 two -two from number 22 swings and misses. And that'll end the top of the first for North Georgia. They get no runs on one hit. There are no Spartan errors and one runner left on base. And we'll get our first look this afternoon at the Spartans offensively. Yes, yes. Let's look out for Mariah Gellhouse, who's at that um, Mariah Gellhouse. Do you have the lineup, Bruce? She's at the third position. She's at the third lineup, and you have Corinne Miner, as you stated before, at the cleanup. We'll see the top of the lineup for the Spartans as they get going. And we've seen this with the previous games for the Spartans. They get going really, really early in the first and second inning, even the third inning, and then... Um, in the next innings, they just the pitching and the defense is very, very stellar. So we'll see the Spartans try to get going here. And as I alluded to, Corinne Miner, the starting pitcher for UT, is in fact hitting in the cleanup position. So if one of the first three runners can get on base, we will see Corinne Miner with the bat. But as you mentioned, Mariah Galhaus, who is having a wonderful season herself, both pitching and hitting, she is in the number three spot. So the top of the order will be Lauren Fantone followed by Avery Perkins and then Gale House. Lauren Fantone's also another name we should look out for because she is definitely known for hitting a lot of triples and getting a lot of RBIs for the Spartans. And for North Georgia, the starting pitcher in this game one of the doubleheader will be Kristen Davis. And Davis, an 0-1 one lost record. She has appeared in four games, has only started one, and a troublesome 13.26 ERA for her so far in 2022. So Kristen Davis will certainly be looking to turn things around here. Definitely, definitely. It's a high ERA right there. Lauren Fansone batting 265. Definitely known for getting on base, Bruce, as our OBP is 286. And so the first pitch of the bottom of the first inning to UT's Lauren Fantone is on the way and called strike one. Not surprising, Brandon, to see a few fans in the stands here with University of North Georgia shirts on coming down to Florida, West Central Florida, to support their team on the road. Yes, yes. A lot of loyal fans, a lot of loyal parents as it's Thursday, but... It's not the weekend yet, but they want to support their, their daughters and their family relatives. You saw a ball one there to Lauren Fantone. Next pitch on the way from Davis. And that one's up high for ball two. Davis is bringing the heat with that speed. And she just manages to catch the corner of the strike zone. So two and two now against Lauren Fantone. Sadie Johnson is behind the plate, catcher for the Nighthawks. And Davis happy with the signal from her, and that one's going to be up high. So a full count now, as the Spartans would love to see their leadoff hitter get on base, just as we saw on the top of the first from the Nighthawks. Yeah, it's all about setting the tone, Bruce, for the Spartans. So if Lauren Fenton gets on base, we'll definitely see a frequency for the Spartans. 3-2 on the way, and Fantone follows that one down the third baseline. Head coach Leslie Kander down there where the little bit of shade is. We got to see her the other day register her career 700th victory. Yes. A tremendous career here at UT. 
as the coach of Spartan softball. Let's see if Fenson could fight the count. And right Straight, back wow. at Davis for the line out for out number one. Score reaction time by Kristen Davis. We had a game here recently where we saw that happen. And for UT, it was Mary Beth Feldman, the pitcher that got hit on the face mask, had to be removed from the game. Fortunately, she was okay. But you see the benefit of having that face mask. Yes. How quickly the ball came off the bat there. And like you said, good reaction time exactly. by Davis. And we see a lot of softball players as they're growing up. Usually the infield has all the protective headgear, but now it's just the pitcher as they're very close to the mound. I mean, they're very close to the home plate. So, like you said, very good reaction time there. And we saw Avery Perkins there, the freshman from Fort Myers, showing bunt on her first pitch from Davis. And yeah, she's looking to slap it. Now the count even on Avery Perkins, one and one. Spartans wearing their black pants with white on top. And you see University of North Georgia all in powder blue as the next pitch. Yep. Indeed, trying to slap and just went foul. Davy Perkins, she's out of Fort Myers, Florida. And there are a lot of lefties out of Fort Myers, um, as Deion Sanders is known to be from Fort Myers. And he was a lefty in his prime time playing baseball. Kristen Davis ready to go back to work here. The 1-2. And that one sent to the left field line and caught for out number two by Jolie Lester. Now it's Gellhouse. Right, at Gellhouse. Batting average of 324. Wow. OBP of 343. So she is definitely trying to get on base. And we mentioned about North Georgia and the balance of lefties and righties. UT had two lefties lead off the game, and that's it. The rest of the order for the Spartans, three through nine, all righties. As you see, Galhouse here with the 0-1 on the way to her from Davis and flies that one out of play back towards the screen. Well, they better watch the cars. <laughs> so 0-2 now as Galhouse quickly has fallen behind in the count. She seems a little anxious, trying to take a deep breath. Kristen Davis trying to close things out here in the bottom of the first. 0-2 on the way. And does catch Ooh. the corner of the strike zone for out number three. As down goes Mariah Galehouse and the Tampa Spartans in the bottom of the first. No runs on no hits. There were no North Georgia errors and no runners left on base. We'll take a break. You are watching TampaSpartans.tv. And we are back here at the Namoli Family Stadium on the grounds of the University of Tampa campus. One inning is complete. This is a scheduled doubleheader. This is game one. I'm Bruce Wozniak alongside Brandon Davis, and we are scoreless. As Brandon, we will see the five, six, and seven hitters this half inning for the visitors. Gracie Mixon up at the plate, a right-handed batter. First pitch to her, check swing, and it's ball one. Yes. 
In case you missed it, North Georgia led the game off. And there's, I was going to say, they led the game off with the base oh. hit, and now they lead off the top of the second with what should be scored as their second hit of the game and indeed right away up on the scoreboard. So in each half inning so far, the visitors have been able to get their leadoff hitter on base. Yes, yes. And you, as you can see, Perkins was just a little bit too late just to get there, a little blooper in the infield. And that'll bring up Hannah Forehand. Showing bunt already, and let's see if she stays that way. And now, oh wow, lashes that one to left field oh, and, and bobbled. And the runner's going to go all the way to third base. Oh, she's going home. She's going, the, the, she's going to pickle? A oh, big no. turn there by Mixon and retreats back to third base after all. But Brandon, unfortunately, out in left field, just not able to handle it. Lauren nah. Fantone. Uh, I, think, I believe that hit off her, her chin. as the, It hit the glove and it hit her chin. As you were saying, as you alluded to before, the sun getting in their eyes. I was going to say, I may have to grab the binoculars and look and see if she has <laughs> sunglasses on out there because that looked like it was going to be caught. Now. seen UT in previous games get in this type of situation, but they always rely on their pitching and they always get out of a jam. But this is very early in the bottom of the, of the second, I mean, excuse me, the top of the second. And as the team, they collude together and they talk together. We'll see if they can try to regroup as a team and try to get out of this, this problem. Yeah, interesting to see that this is not head coach Leslie Cantor calling this conference. This is the battery and all the infielders coming together to talk this out, trying to settle each other down. And really just a couple of unfortunate plays there, the bobble by Lauren Fantone in left yeah. field and then the overthrow that we just saw. This team has a lot of confidence in Corinne Miner, so I'm sure that they'll, they'll get something done. Sadie Johnson, the number eight hitter, for North Georgia. And lashes that Ooh. one foul oh. down the left field line. and two to Sadie Johnson. Low and away for ball one. Here comes the one two, follows Foul. it back, and Johnson stays alive. Johnson a two sixty three average hitter. Trying to see if she could get more runs for her team. Corinne Miner, the one two, and that's low Checks and in. does get the strikeout. And so the Spartans able to get the first out of this top of the second inning. And just a little bit of an exhale. Yeah. <laughs> Corinne Miner gets the second strikeout of the day. Let's see if she could get her third out. Oh, the third strikeout, excuse me. As here's the pitch. And this is the number nine hitter, J.C. Michael. The 1-0 to her. And that's ball two. You see the UT catcher, which is Lexi Chevalier, trying to frame that one to influence the call 
of home plate umpire Scott Johnson, who wasn't taking. So the 2-0 now. And slap, slap, slap just foul. Just foul. Just ran alongside the third base bag. Two and one here against J.C. Michael. Miner delivers, and there's another one that's going to go foul down the third base line. This is a doubleheader. They foul off enough of those, and they're going to have to get an excess supply of more softballs. <laughs> Usually if you hit a home run, you have to get it after. <laughs> another one. She's really fighting. At the same time, the longer that J.C. Michael continues to foul off pitch after pitch, the more work that you're putting on the arm of UT pitcher Corinne Miner. Here comes another 2-2. That's up high. So the count now full. And you don't want to see a pitcher have such a high count in, such the, in the early innings of the game. So Corinne Miner really struggling right now. Another foul tip. Let's see if she could pitch something something else, maybe an off speed pitch. There's the three two. And bounce to short, bobbled, and there will not be a play at first. And another run scores. There's some difficulty handling that one by Steph Ballmer at shortstop as the difficulties continue for UT here in the top of the second. Well, they have the right strategy. It's, just, it's about execution. So that'll bring us back to the top of the North Georgia batting order with Julie Lester. Lester is one for one, started the game off with a single. And there goes the runner over to second. They try down at third. And, and she they is do out. Get her. Good heads up play there by the Spartans catcher, Lexi Chevalier. So two outs now and a runner at second. The complexion of this inning just changed as that one goes for a ball. So meanwhile, J.C. Michael, now the runner on second base. As that one sails up high and is going to allow Michael to advance to third. And Lester is known for getting a lot of hits as her batting average is 359. So we'll see if she can get a base hit to score in this run right here. And that one is low. And Corinne Miner, very uncharacteristic for her difficulties that she's running into here in the top of the second with two outs. And it's going to be a walk for the Hawks as you have a runner on first and third. That'll bring up the number two hitter, Olivia Sinkfield. Runners on the corners as the visitors have put up two runs so far in this at bat. Singfield already has seven RBIs in the season. Slaps that one foul on the third base side. Brandon, if you're UT head coach Leslie Cantor, not real happy looking up at the scoreboard and already seeing three errors on yeah. your team's line. Oof. As that one sent to left field, and Pantone will not runs. get it. She goes all the way to the wall to play it. 
And two runs will score a two RBI double by as Olivia was, Sinkfield. As you were saying, Leslie Cantor cannot be happy right now, giving up four runs as she comes out to the mound. And you wonder what the likelihood is here that we will see a pitching change. No motion from her so far. This by no means is the way they wanted to start the game, especially knowing that you've got a whole nother game against you know, the Nighthawks here. It's all about setting this home, Bruce. And as you can see, Leslie Cantor walks off the field, really trying to strike motivation into her, her players. The energy s seems to be uplifted a little bit as they, rem they remain optimistic. So we'll see what happens. So Miner's pitch count right now is f at 41 in the top of the second. Not a good look right now for Miner. And the pitch there to Madison Simmons. 1 and 0 oh against her. Keep in mind, still a runner in scoring position, Olivia Singfield on second base. As that one is fouled off towards the Spartans' dugout. This is the number four ranked University of North Georgia Nighthawks. They have an 11 and five, one loss record. UT is ranked number 13. They are eight and three. And the University of North Georgia very much looking like a number four ranked team thus far. As you see, a strike there brings the count to one and two. Another foul ball. Interestingly enough, Corinne Miner with her difficulties here in the pitching circle. She's going to lead things off when the Spartans come up to bat in the bottom of the second. So she'll have an opportunity to affect the game offensively herself right away. Definitely. She has a history of just retaliating on the opposite end. So we'll definitely see that in the next inning. There's a long foul ball down the left field line. As you can see, a beautiful afternoon for softball. The stadium is bathed in sunshine. As Biner now with the one-two and strikes her out. So strikeout number four recorded by Corinne Miner, but not after some real difficulties in the top of the second as North Georgia scores four times to open up a big lead. And that might have been her last batter, maybe. We're not sure. Maybe Leslie Cancer came out to the mound saying that, get out of this, get out of this gym. This might be a light, last batter. And then we'll probably see another pitcher in the next inning. What do you think, Bruce? Well, as I said, they're going to count on Corinne, at least for her bat, whether she continues pitching or not. And Miner, so far this season, showing her contributions offensively as well. She's hitting 355 and has a team high 7 RBI. She's also tied for the team lead and hits with 11 and it's interesting she's tied with another Mariah member Gellhouse. of the pitcher, yep. pitching staff, Mariah Gellhaus. We might see Mariah Gellhaus um, pitch after Corinne Maya if she continues to struggle so that's definitely something we, we might see. And, of course, the other challenge for head coach Leslie Cantor is she's already got someone scheduled to pitch the second game of this doubleheader. Who is it, and how does that affect what you do in game one? Well, it's all about adjustment with these doubleheaders, and the Tampa Spartans are very confident, and we'll see if they can just try to get it. It's all, it's all about taking one game at a time. So when the second game comes, the second game will come. But right now, definitely for Leslie Cantor, is definitely trying to win this game. So Kristen Davis... Back in the circle here to start the bottom of the second. And Corinne Miner comes to the plate after the Spartans went three up and three down in the bottom of the first. KRS-1 for her walk-up intro. It's an interesting choice. 
and bounces it right back to Davis and throw to first is just in time. I thought she was safe, Bruce. I might have to say. And a heads up there defensively after we saw the bounce. That seemed like it was going to be the difference. But the first base umpire, Peter DeRosa, right there on the spot to call the out. So Minor goes down, and that brings up Alexa Russo. Sky from Russo. Russo known for having her RBIs in the season. So those four RBIs so far. Ahead in the count now, 2-0. Alexa Russo from right here in Tampa. Played her high school ball at Tampa Catholic. And the 2-0 now swung on and missed. Wow, Russo is swinging at the fences on that one. <laughs> Her head definitely turned out on that one. And that becomes a chan challenge, Brandon, is you try to impact the game with one swing at the bat and can only get these runs one at a time even if she would have homered still only going to make the game four to one so at this point it's all about base hits base hits yep taking it one step at a time trying to get on base and make an impact three and one to the spartans number five hitter alexa russo And there will be ball four. So the Spartans get their first base runner of the game and will take any little moral victory he can get with the way yes. this game has started. It's good at bat from Russo as she gets on first base. Now we have Lexi Chevalier. So Chevalier has a runner at first. One out here in the bottom of the second. And strike one. Chevalier, watch that one go by. The 0 1 from Davis. Chevalier pops that one up, and that'll go out of play. Just a little bit too early on that one, Bruce. We've talked before on previous broadcasts this season, a primarily Florida lineup for the Spartans in 2022. I believe the number is just three players on the entire roster that are from outside of the Sunshine State. Chevalier from nearby Valrico played her high school ball at Bloomingdale High School as the 0-2 to her chopped and charged by the shortstop over to first, and they do get it just in time for out number three. Correction, out number two. As Russo gets to second base, we have an opportunity of scoring maybe in a base hit. Stephanie Balmer comes up to the plate, at, also out of Tampa, Florida. Went to Steinbrenner High School. So Chevalier is retired on the fielder's choice, and Balmer, the number seven hitter. Trying to give the Spartans some hope here with a runner in scoring position. Chops that one foul. Spartans falling behind in too many counts. Like I said before, they're a little bit anxious at the plate. Just got to remain calm and composed and try to fight out this at bat. And Davis is 0-2, swing and a miss, and down goes Steph Ballmer. That is out number three, the second strikeout of the game for Kristen Davis. And so the Spartans still scoreless. No runs, no hits. There were no North Georgia errors, and one runner left on base. So we are through two complete. Our score four to nothing in favor of the Nighthawks. We'll be right back on TampaSpartans.tv.
McLive and starting the top of the third. As you see, the first pitch popped up, and that goes out of play. The cleanup hitter, Haley Cummings, leading things off for the Nighthawks here. Struck out back in the first inning. Miners 0-1, and that answers the question of whether she had seen her last batter from the pitching circle or not as Corinne is back to start this top of the third. That just, that just goes to tell you the confidence that Coach Canna has in her, in her teammates, I mean her players, excuse me. And right to the shortstop, Steph Ballmer, a line out quickly for the first out for the Nighthawks here in the top of the third. Gracie Mixon up to the plate. 373 batting average on the year. Singled in her first plate appearance, second inning, and pops that one up. Balmer calls for it. And just like that, there's two down. Both courtesy of shortstop Stephanie Balmer. And a forehand, the number six hitter, who is one for one. Back to face minor here in the top of the third, showing bunt initially, and now changes that. And the strategy there, Brandon, for showing bunt? Just a, it's just a fake. There's no one on base. Trying to get into the head of minor, perhaps? Maybe. It's ball inside. One and one in what could be an inning that, for all intents and purposes, you might end up calling the exact opposite of what we just saw in the last North Georgia at bat. Uh, that one's going to be Ooh. not caught. It was chased down in foul territory by Alyssa Carfora. Nonetheless, one and two to Hannah Forehand. And Miner able to induce a pop out. And how about Steph Ballmer with all three put outs herself? <laughs> One, two, three inning the for the Spartans. Third. That's how they like it. Yeah, for the Nighthawks, no runs and no hits, no Spartan errors, and nobody left on base. But again, when I say no errors, that half inning, again, it's worth repeating if you just joined us. UT, three errors in this game already, which has contributed largely to them being down four to nothing. Yes, yes, Bruce. And they're definitely trying to correct that with these next innings. And. I've definitely seen them improving with the Spartans, as you just as you can tell, they just had a one, two, three inning. And we've seen this in previous games of the Spartans having one, two, three innings. In the mid third to sixth inning, we've seen a lot of defense and a lot of good pitching from the Spartans. So they're definitely back on track, I would say. Would you wouldn't you say that? Well they got a base runner in their last at bat. They need to actually get some hits. The base runner that they got was by way of a walk. And UT, as I mentioned before, you're not going to come up and be the first batter to start off the inning yeah. and with one swing of the bat tie up the game. So they need to start putting together some base hits and generating some runs before all of a sudden time becomes a factor in the sense that the game gets away from you and it's only seven innings. Here we are starting the bottom of the, the, bottom third, of the third. So it's about time to get their hitting shoes on. Yep. And usually, like I said, as I previously stated, the Spartans, they usually get their runs in the first or second inning. And it's a little bit abnormal for the Spartans to be down 4 nothing. So, as you previously alluded to, we should definitely get some runs going on. Yeah, definitely uncharted territory, meaning giving up four runs, because UT has not given up four or more runs since back on the 6th, when they lost 6-2 to two in... Game one of a doubleheader against Ursuline. And you see strike one there to start the bottom of the third. And now the 0-1. Just enough outside for ball one. Emily Jansen. Spartans first base player getting out of the number eight position and oh, smacks that nice one hit. way down the left field line and that's foul 
Indeed, a well-struck ball. Well however. struck hit. Yeah, another hit that went out of bounds. I mean, that went foul. And if they could just stay in bounds, then it would be a completely different game, in my opinion. As you would definitely see more triples and more doubles for the Spartans. Emily Jansen with that long reach, the tallest player on the team at an even six foot zero. And they get her looking for strike three. And a tough one there for Jansen. As you mentioned, the ball down the left field line, just foul. And just like that, she's retired. So Alyssa Carr the number nine hitter, Spartans third base player, with her first at bat of the game. Jansen giving giving some advice to uh to Carfora right before she went up to the plate about that breaking ball pitch. The 0 one coming from Davis to Carfora and bounces it to second and bobbled over in time. Yes, says first base umpire Peter DeRosa. Top of the lineup here for the Spartans. As you said, Bruce. Pantone, who lined out to the pitcher to start off this game. Up high there for ball one. A little bit of a breeze as we see the flag in right center field. A little bit of a breeze blowing from left to right. Well, this state is known for being very, very humid, so it's always nice to feel a little bit of breeze in the Sunshine State. 2-0 the count to Lauren Fantone. Her team trails 4 to nothing, and still looking for their first hit of the game. As you see strike one there. Antone chops it to first, bobbled. Will there be time safe? So Fantone just manages to get there. And as I said before, the Spartans will take it any way they can get it. As that's their first hit of the game. Fantone gets on base. And they actually scored it an error. Oh, they did. Oh, she did, she did bobble up the play, so... Makes sense. And that'll bring up Avery Perkins. Perkins lashes that one to left field and caught by Lester for out number three. So the Spartans again strand a runner and still find themselves on the wrong end of a four to nothing score after three complete. And we'll be right back on TampaSpartans.tv. Back live as you see foul ball there as the University of North Georgia starting off 
the top of the fourth here with a four to nothing lead and a great way to start a double header if you're the road team yes yes Maddie Pe- Perry excuse me Maddie Perry up to the plate right now trying to increase his lead for the Nighthawks as they leave four nothing in the top of the fourth she drove in a run with a single in the second and now chops that one to short or excuse me to second and nicely played and as routine as that play looks those are the kind of small victories that the Spartans need. No more errors, routine ground outs. Try to get North Georgia as quickly as you can and get back up to the plate and try to generate some offense. Yeah, well, it's about channeling and harnessing in those little choppers in the, in the infield and angling those plays and just trying to get good execution in the, in the infield. Sadie Johnson skies that one foul, and nice play there defensively by Steph Ballmer to go over and make the catch for out number two and just that quickly already two gone so these small little victories that they have to build on well Steph Bomber looking like Derek Jeter out there with the leadership in the infield as she's definitely executing well and maintaining that consistency and she wears the same jersey number as Derek Jeter Derek Jeter yes number two in the meantime her teammate number 22 Dealing from the circle, Corinne Miner seems to have rebounded from that tough second inning. As you see that one to Carfora over to first, and Ooh. Jansen not able to handle it. And so the Nighthawks get another runner aboard. And that'll be the fourth error of the game wow. for the Spartans. I don't think we've seen that this season. I don't know that we've seen four errors combined <laughs> all season. And Corinne Miner gets the strike call there. We're seeing these right-handed pitchers try to get that outside corner in for the lefties. You see if they can try to bait, but they're not falling for it, really. And Lester smacks that one to left field and caught for out number three. So the Spartans able to thwart any kind of an attack that the University of North Georgia would have tried to put on with that runner that they got on first base. And so again, Brandon, the Bears are repeating. That's something that the Spartans can build on. Three quick outs. They allowed a runner on base. Sure, it was an error. Sure. However, no damage done. Still starting to settle down defensively. Just need to get the bats working. Exactly, and I think that it starts with the defense. We, we know in baseball and softball, it's all about the, what the pitching is doing. It's all about the pitching. So, if the pitching is good, everything else will come into fruition. So, and as the defense does start to get itself together, and you look for the offense to rebound, this is where you want to be, right in the meat of the order. They've got the numbers three, four, and five hitters coming up this half inning. So the Spartans hitters. will have the people coming to the plate that they want when they need some runs. And As we hear some pop smoke. going to be Gail House, who you've talked about. We're going to see Minor, and we're going to see Alexa Russo. Yes, yes. As uh, Mariah Gail House comes up to the plate, listen to Pop Smoke. Pop Smoke is a... Well, rest in peace, Pop Smoke, but he electrifies his audience with his electrifying music, so... We'll see if that gets her riled up. Gelhaus struck out looking back in the first inning. And the first pitch to her to start off the bottom of the fourth is ball one. We saw this past Saturday, if you watched our broadcast, a doubleheader that the game one win resulted in Leslie Cantor, UT's head coach, her 700th career victory. But I ended up calling that Mariah Galhaus Day because she pitched a complete game for the victory in game one. And then in game two... Then saved it. Game two really supported the team offensively. And not to mention, as you said, had to come in and pitch a little bit of that game as well. As you see a swing and a miss there. One and two. Gailhouse here waiting for her pitch. 
Swing and a miss. And down goes Mariah Galhaus as out number one here in the bottom of the fourth. So that brings up Corinne Miner, the cleanup hitter for UT. She is 0-1, 0 for 1 this afternoon as well. Grounded out to second, back in the second inning. That one's in the dirt for ball one. And Brandon really have to compliment pitcher Kristen Davis for the University of North Georgia. Yeah, what she's done from the circle so far this afternoon. Seeing her ERA and seeing her watching her in person now, I just can't see how her ERA is so high. But she's definitely getting a pounce on here with the with her her pitching. And if you recall, I believe it was the second inning when you were reporting Corinne Miner's pitch count already being 40, if not more, and for Davis only 38 to this point. So very efficient with her pitches, although falling behind very much here in the at-bat by Corinne Miner, a 3-0 and count. And let's see if Miner's swinging on this one and looks at it for strike one. Three and one now, and chopped in the hole for a base hit, and Corinne Miner is aboard and without one out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And that's how you get it going, Bruce. Nice little base hits like that, gets the offense going, and you just see repeating, 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 and you'll just see it happening. So that'll bring up the number five hitter, Alexa Russo. She was UT's first base runner of the game in the second inning by way of a base on balls. And chops that one to short. Nicely played over to second and to first, not in time. So they get the lead runner as Corinne Miner is retired. Two away now in the bottom of the fourth. So Miner, if nothing else, Broke up the no-hitter by her opposing pitcher. Yes. As we have one man on base now. The Chevalier up. Chevalier swings and misses. Lexi Chevalier 0 for 1. Here in this game so far. And smacks that one for a line out to second base for out number three. So the Spartans get no runs on one hit. There was one North Georgia error. And we are through four complete. Our score remains the Nighthawks four and the Spartans nothing. You are watching TampaSpartans.tv. We'll be right back. Back live, I'm Bruce Wozniak, joined by Brandon Davis. We are in game one 
of a scheduled doubleheader between number 13 ranked University of Tampa and the number four ranked University of North Georgia as the first pitch is fair and do they make the tag? No. Emily Jansen looked like she <laughs> tried to tag the batter running to first. Abigail Siegel comes in at third base on that play. First base umpire Peter DeRosa with the safe signal as you saw Jansen unable to apply the tag. So the Nighthawks get the leadoff hitter aboard and it looked like she wanted to go meaning Singfield down at first base. And the runner tags and the catch is made in left field by Lauren Fantone. And so Simmons is retired and that'll bring up the cleanup hitter, Haley Cummings, who's 0 for 2 so far in this game. Runner goes. goes. And they do get her down at second base. Great play by Perkins on that play. Getting there in time and laying down the tag. So that will clear the bases with two outs. And it looked like Cummings, the batter, may have called time there. As now Miner delivers. And that's ball two. So Lexi Chevalier, the throw from behind the plate, just in time to Alexa Russo covering it second. And there's two outs, and is this going to be number three? Ooh. Thank God they got that catch. <laughs> wow. Well, on the run was Lauren Fantone ranging over from left field, as you saw her and Mariah Galhaus, and that's where communication is so important. Exactly. Usually we would say in that situation, I got it, I got it, I got it. They probably said it, but the sun can't really see out there, but we're just lucky that they got the catch to end the inning and no injuries. And it's interesting, Brandon, you know, this has not been the UT team that we're used to seeing a lot of trouble. We look at the scoreboard and see four Spartan errors. We see that they only have one hit. And yet, strangely enough, if you take away that top of the second inning, this game is scoreless. This game is still scoreless. In my, in my opinion, it could very well turn around in one inning. So we'll see how the Spartans can retaliate as they had a really good defensive play on this previous half inning. But let's see how the Spartans retaliate in this, Bruce. And they'll do it by starting with their number seven hitter, Steph Ballmer. And well, granted, they only have one hit as a team. And we, we've seen the Spartans put a runner on base by way of a walk. They've put a runner on base by way of an error. But you're getting down to your seven, eight, nine hitters who are all 0 for 1 so far. So somebody needs to take out, take charge here and step up and get things moving for the Spartans offensively. Well, I believe the start of the lineup, you know, with Fantone, Perkins, Gerhouse, they really set the tone. Minor, excuse me. I didn't want to exclude her. But they really set the tone for the Spartans. So not having them, having their bat alive, leads to the bottom of the lineup having a, l a little bit more pressure on, on themselves to get something going. So we'll see how Seth Barmer comes up as she's the number seven batter, I believe so. And she struck out looking back in the second inning. And as I mentioned, you never like to strike out with the bat on your shoulder. And I'm sure that she hasn't forgotten that plate appearance. So let's see what she does here in the bottom of inning number five. As this game is closing in to the home stretch. And the Spartans need to find some offense. With potentially only nine outs left. Make that eight outs left. As you see, Balmer with the line out and unassisted put out there by Olivia Sinkfield. And so that'll bring up Emily Jansen.
Jansen, strike one. Looks quickly over to third base at her coach, Leslie Cantor, and immediately right back into the box as Kristen Davis winds, delivers way up high. And a nice job pulling that one down by Sadie Johnson. Granted, the bases are empty, so it wouldn't have meant too much. Davis lost control of that one a little bit. So now her 1-1 on the way and fouled back to the screen. Emily Jansen behind here, 1-2. and two. Jansen, that first pitch that she had in her just at bat, definitely, she definitely wanted to get that one. She definitely wanted to she checked swing, but she, I know initially she definitely wanted to hit that one as she's been anxious this whole entire game. Pops that one for out number two as Olivia Sinkfield catches that one routinely. And so we'll see the number nine hitter, Alexa Carfora. Alyssa. And we're actually going to have a pinch hitter now as the Spartans are making a lineup change and Abigail Siegel, who you mentioned took over at third base. Yes, Abigail Siegel. So batting ninth now. And Siegel, if nothing else, gives pitcher Kristen Davis something different to look at, not having seen her in the lineup so far at this point in the game. Which could work in their favor. Siegel is a freshman um, just over the bridge in Clearwater. And here comes the 1-1 to her from Kristen Davis and follows it back. Way up high for ball two. This is her fourth at bat this season. Excuse me, her fifth at bat in her fifth game. And sends it to right field, and nice play there by the second base player to come over and. Make that three outs for the Spartans routinely as they get no runs on no hits, no North Georgia errors, and no runners left on base. So we are through five complete, and the Spartans continue to trail four to nothing. We'll be right back on TampaSpartans.tv. Back live starting the top of the sixth as Corinne Miner deals there to Gracie Mixon. Mixon one for two in this game, singled in the second. And then popped out to short in the third. And that's strike one. A beautiful afternoon for softball. Our game temp temperature was 85 and it's now 86 degrees. And these teams will play a second game here in the Florida Sunshine following this one. 
As you see, Gracie Mixon going toe to toe with Corinne Miner here. Her team comfortably in the lead, four to nothing. And sends that one to the outfield and not going to be caught by Mariah Galehouse. And she'll go in standing up with a double. It's a good hit by Mixon. They really set the tone for this Nighthawks offense. And now this puts her in, her in scoring position to get the fifth run. So Hannah Forehand, the number six hitter who's one for two, sends that one foul over towards the Spartans' dugout. Well, this Nighthawks offense, the majority of them, excluding one batter, they all, all they all in the, at least the 300s in the batting average. I believe one is in 400. So that goes to say how well they hit the ball. And speaks also to why they're the number four ranked team. A one loss record of 11 and 5 coming into this afternoon's play. The Spartans come in at 8 and 3 and ranked number 13. And that one is swung on, and that will go foul as well off the top of the Spartans' dugout on the third baseline. A lot of activity on campus here this afternoon, a weekday game for UT. We've been bringing you a lot of action on the weekend as there's another one that goes foul. Forehand. Trying to get an RBI here to get her 14th of the season. 14th RBI. Batting 364. Foul tip goes back to the screen. A busy weekend for UT if you start with today's play because they're going to get right away on the road and play a game tomorrow over on the other coast of Florida in Melbourne, taking on Florida Tech. And then those two teams will play a doubleheader on Saturday as you see another one followed back. So again, Brandon, this speaks to taxing the arms of the pitching staff with this much ball to be played five games in three days. It's really about the training staff and just good recovery and good diet, to be honest. As... Forehand, really giving Miner something here as Miner is, I think that's a 63rd pitch of the game. And Russo, will she get it there in time? Perk is a little bit disappointed on that play as she cannot regroup in time. It's a routine ground ball for her. And that advances. The base run of the third, and you have a, as you have a man on first now too. And they score that one in errors, so that will be five errors committed by the wow. Spartans this afternoon. And there goes the runner, and Chevalier. I'm not sure why she threw it to short. I've done this play before, and I was growing up. Usually you would throw it to shortstop to sell the fake to the third to the third uh, base runner, but not everyone really falls for that trick. It's a little bit arrogant, I would say, especially dumb down four. And you see, Maddie Perry, the batter, falling behind 0 and 2 now. If that play would have gone wrong, definitely would have seen Cancer upset. That one's up high for a ball. The one two follows that one off. One two to Maddie Perry. 
chops it. Balmer looks down the runner to third, and they do get her. Good play by Siegel. And Steph Balmer with the hesitation, keeping everybody honest. And able, well, now they're saying that Siegel is safe, or excuse me, that Mixon is safe. And the initial call was out, and so the two umpires are going to have a conference. And yeah. the initial call was out. Out. But I don't, I don't, I don't believe Mixon really thinks she's out, as she thought she was safe. As you, as you can see, the third base coach. Yeah, I was going to say, I got to believe, I got to believe that the coach said, stay here. I disagree. I'm going to argue it. Let's get the umpires to conference. Don't leave that third base. Yeah. Now she has to because the umpires are satisfied with the original call, which is that she was out. But again, Steph Ballmer with the original play and keeping everybody honest, and then the flip over to Siegel. It was a good play. R really well timed by her end, and they got it done for the first out. And we're going to get a change here as head coach Mike Davenport talking with home plate umpire Scott Johnson. And so... Let's see what the changes here. And the top of the sixth. As we're going to see, Marley Holmes is going to hit in the number eight slot for the Nighthawks. Miner's first offering to Holmes is strike one. So runners on first and second for the pinch hitter Marley Holmes. And the 0-1 to her Ooh. brushes her back a little bit. One and one. Swing and a miss. And the throw. The, will they get her at third? No, safe. And there goes the runner to second. So runners advance as they're both in scoring position right now. The good position, a good situation here for Marley Holmes Marley behind Holmes. In the count, but as you mentioned, she all of a sudden has two runners in scoring position. 382 batting average. And she Holmes, goes down. That'll be strikeout number five for Corinne Miner. Top of the lineup here for the Nighthawks. Spartans all exhaling now with two down. Top of the sixth. J.C. Michael up to the plate. Swing and a miss by Michael who is one for two in this game. An RBI single in the second and reached on an error in the fourth. Ball one. Two runners aboard for the Nighthawks. Who have a four to nothing lead. All of their runs came in the top of the second. And that one's foul down the third base line. And let's see if Corinne Miner can strike out Michael and get out of this jam. Yeah. And that's going to drop for a base hit. That's the score for the Nighthawks. The fifth run. It's a good slap hit by Michael. Hannah Forehand crossed home plate there. As the University of North Georgia increases their lead to 5 to nothing. Bruce, are you and surprised that Corinne Martin is still in? Well... Only because they have five games in three days, I'm not. As you see, that one chopped to first, Emily Jansen. But the home plate umpire yells foul. And so, given Brandon the fact that UT has another game immediately after this one, then they go on the road, play the three games that I mentioned uh, over the course of tomorrow and Saturday. I think that's largely dictating Leslie Cantor yeah. leaving Corinne Miner in. And don't forget, she did settle down after that tough second inning. 
And there goes the runner down to second, and Chevalier instead going to third, and instead they now have runners at second and third. As expected. One one coming now to Lester. Swing and a miss. One and two. Miner settled down as I started to say. It's just the fact that there's been five errors around her that hasn't helped. And now we'll have a play at the pitch. Plate. No play there. The runner comes in easily. For the sixth run. So, so six runs scores for the Nighthawks. Six runs on six hits and one error for the Nighthawks. No runs, one hit, and five errors for, for the Spartans. And the Nighthawks with the runner still at third now. Let's see if Mina can get out of his jam. 2-2 two, two count, two outs. To Russo at second, over to first. And Jansen with the put out for out number three. But not after the Nighthawks do some more damage as the score has largely inflated with potentially only six outs left for the Spartans. Our score now six to nothing through five and a half. And as you mentioned, six runs on six hits for the visitors. The Spartans, no runs and still only one hit in this ball game. Yeah. Very, very shocking, as we've seen from the previous games. The Spartans have been relatively consistent with their hitting and their runs, but they are scoreless right now, and they're going into the bottom of the six. And we're going to have to see as this afternoon moves along, you talk about should they make a pitching change or not. There will clearly be adjustments made for the second game in that you have to look at not so much of the bats not coming through, but all those errors have been committed yeah. in the field. Do you make some substitutions for game two because of that? Well, you've seen already a substitution with Stephanie Ballmer and coming in with, um, with Abigail Siegel. So we'll definitely see maybe some minor substitutions in the infield. But it definitely was not expected um, from coming from head coach Leslie Cantor. Yeah, Carfora so, actually is who Siegel replaced, not Ballmer. But point well taken. And so clearly that's going to be a very important break in between the games for Cantor to talk to her lineup, get these bats going, maybe make some adjustments, whether it's offensively, defensively, or both. Did I say Bomber? Excuse me, I meant it's Lisa Carfora, my fault. But yes, I, I would expect some substitutions in the second game. And to lead things off here in the bottom of the sixth, it'll be the top of the order for UT as Lauren Fantone comes to the plate. She lined up to the pitcher to start off the game and then reached on an error in the third, the only North Georgia error of this game. And you see the first pitch to her at strike one. The 0-1 on the way, and Fantone looks at that one for ball one. We talked about the fans that traveled down here from North Georgia to watch the visiting team, and they're certainly happy with having <laughs> made the long drive. Yes, yes. Well worth the gas, and the gas money. <laughs> and Fantone chops that one second over, and just, just in time. Out. And a nice stretch there by Olivia Sinkfield at first base. That'll bring up Avery Perkins. 0 for 2 in this game. It went over into foul territory for an out back in the first inning on the third base side. And then an out to left field in the third. Owen Wonder her here in the bottom of the sixth. Perkins now behind Owen two.
slap hit there and not going to be fielded in time as that one. Let's see if that's an error, if that's Might too hot error. to handle. Perfect Either way. on base for the first time. Indeed. And that gets into the... Well, I was going to say, it looks like we're going to have a pinch hitter as Miranda Perez is going to hit now for UT. And they, they, do, they do score that as an error. So two errors now in the game for North Georgia. It's a lot of errors combined in this game. And officially it means the Spartans still with just the one hit in the game. So Perez comes in for Gerhaus. But you know, Brandon, what more could you want from pitcher Kristen Davis in the outing that she's had? Complete flip side from seeing her ERA. Currently pitching right now one hitter. And that one's followed back by Miranda Perez. Perez, the second baseman out of Wesley Chapel of Florida. Batting average is currently a 400 with her six at bat as she goes swinging. One, two now to Miranda Perez. And that one will go to the backstop, and into second base will go Avery Perkins. So the Spartans with a runner in scoring position. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. Let's see if they can turn around here, Bruce. Swing and a miss, Perez. That'll be strikeout number five by... North Georgia pitcher Kristen Davis. And that'll bring up Corinne Miner. Miner has the Spartans only hit of the game. That was a single in the fourth inning. First pitch to her here in the bottom of the sixth is way up high for a ball. Perkins looking like she's trying to advance the third base on that to really ensure that the Spartans get their first run. Now down two outs. Bounce that one in. Two and oh here with two outs. First game of a scheduled doubleheader. And Miner drives that one to center and caught for out number three by J.C. Michael. And so UT, no runs, no hits. There was one North Georgia error and one run left on base. We are through six complete, and the score North Georgia six and UT nothing. We'll be back on TampaSpartans.tv. I was on the same they're changing pitchers. UT is. They're putting in uh, D. Simone. D. Simone, King D. Simone. I was saying, the reason, you look at the at bats because this is not live, so that's why. Well, no, I wanted you to mention that even though she's hitting 400, she's only had like five at bats on the season. Yeah, that's a, oh, yeah, yeah. Because she was a pinch hitter, so I this was her only at bat of the game. The way you wanted me to say, I didn't say it that way. I know you're trying to say, yeah. Yeah, make sure. Um, Make sure you say runner on base, not man on base. Say, say like second base player instead of second base man, because it's not because it's not baseball. So I, because I it's females, base, it, it wasn't second base, but it, whatever it was, first baseman, third baseman, third baseman. You got to say first base player, th second base player, because it's females. So yeah, I'm doing the same thing with um, uh, Taylor, Taylor because he says on the mound instead of in the circle. There's no mound, oh, wow. so you don't say on the mound. You say in the circle. And I, I think I did say the mouse. I think so you only said it once, actually. Yeah. Okay, thank you. How much? 12 more seconds.
Back live here, and we do have a pitching change for the Spartans as Kate DeSimone is going to step into the circle here to start the top of the seventh. So Corinne Miner finishes with a pitch count of 75. She had five strikeouts, walked one. Six full innings, gave up nine hits. Well, excuse me, six hits. De Simone out of Royal Palm Beach, Florida. The ball outside. So I had one appearance for Simone here. Current ERA is 2-10. Giving up four hits and one run. One and one to Olivia Sinkfield from D. Simone. Swing and a miss. So Kate D. Simone, if nothing else, a different look for the Nighthawks batters. Cantor consults with the home plate umpire. So Olivia Sinkfield behind here in the count one and two. As Kate DeSimone tries to retire her in this first at bat. And not going to be the case as that one goes all the way to the wall. And so Kate DeSimone, the one and two count goes for naught as they get a double to lead off the top of the seventh. And it's a good hit. From the Hawks. Nice little hit to deep left center. And now Mariah Wicker is going to pinch hit for the Nighthawks. Wicker showing bunt and foul ball. So Sinkfield goes back to second base. So this is Wicker's 14th at bat. As she tries to get on base with the bunt. Successful and doesn't beat the throw, however. So they do move up the runner. Wicker did what needs to be done. And she gets the runner to third base. As Haley Cummings comes up to the plate. She is the cleanup hitter and Cummings is 0 for 3 in this game as she sends that one foul down the third baseline. What about the game by Olivia Sinkfield? 3 for 4 at the plate for the University of North Georgia. Also and mixing with 2 for 3. 0 1. That's going to be a ball to Cummings. Kate D. Simone on in relief here in the seventh inning for starter Corinne Miner. And that one's sent to left field and caught. Here comes the runner. Will there be a play at the plate? No, she's in safely. And so the lead now increases to seven to nothing for the Nighthawks. In the throw there by Fenson wasn't just in time 
wasn't it didn't have enough momentum on the play. Just a little quick, little flick trying to get get it to the home plate, but she was unsuccessful in that play. And that'll bring up Gracie Mixon, number five hitter, who is two for three in this game. And that one goes foul down the right field line. Nixon with a single and a double on the play in this game. Two outs in the top of the seventh, but unfortunately for the Spartans, the Nighthawks have added to their lead with another run and trail seven to nothing. Here comes the 0-1 and fouled back and not going to be playable as Emily Jansen goes over to catch it off the screen. goes foul down the third base line just past Corinne Miner over at third base and this is what we see Miner never watches the game from the dugout she's either playing third she's pitching she is the workhorse in this UT lineup definitely versatile Gracie Mixon working this at bat against Kate D. Simone. Mixon just backed off enough to avoid getting hit. One and two is the count. And sends that one to right center field for a base hit. She's going to go for two, and they will not get it in time. And so Gracie Mixon, a stand-up double with two out in the top of the seventh. And that's North her Georgia second. has come to play. Yeah, that's her second double then of the, the game here, Bruce. Another runner in scoring position. Up seven runs. Definitely send the tone here. I think the North Georgia players slept with their hitting shoes on last night. We've <laughs> seen an offensive parade here for the visitors. The 0-1 now swung on and to left field, Fantone under it and makes the catch for out number three. So we'll go to the final half inning and the Spartans really have their work cut out for them given that they're not only trailing by seven but still only have the one hit the entire game. Yeah, Kristen Davis p props to her tonight. I mean, excuse me, this afternoon. One hit, shut out so far, and she's continuing to go to the circle and just pitch good, good pitches after good pitches. So props to Kristen Davis. Yeah, and it's been fundamental softball for the Nighthawks because Davis does only have five strikeouts, so it's not even as though she's taking care of all of the work herself with strikeouts. It's just her team around her giving yeah. her the defense that she needs. Well, I personally think that the Spartans, they got a little bit too under the ball when they're hitting, so it allows a little bit more uh, pop flies. And um, they also, like you said, Kristen Davis, five strikeouts. You've seen a lot, of pe a lot of the Spartans striking out looking and not having that bat alive. So the Spartans, as they have, this is their last chance to try to get something going here. We'll see what they can do. And, you know, in sports they talk about you have to have a short memory. And so the Spartans are going to have to really put this game behind them and come right back out on the field in game two against this same team that will have just had their way with them and start with a clean slate and try to get a split of this doubleheader. Oh, for sure, Bruce. And that's the beauty of the doubleheaders. You could put aside the first game and what, ha what happens because it's a different pitcher. It's, it's different. It's the score is 0-0. You come in, nice little break, and you get going for the second game. So... That's the beauty of doubleheaders. And you're already in the motion of playing. So we'll get ready to start the bottom of the seventh 
And scheduled to lead things off will be UT's number five hitter, Alexa Russo. Russo walked in the second inning and hit into a fielder's choice in the fourth. As Kristen Davis looking to record the complete game here, barring disaster. <laughs> Her first pitch of the bottom of the seventh is ball one. One zero from Davis. Two and zero now to Alexa Russo. And if there was any moral victory to be taken away from this game, it would be if the Spartans could just break the shutout. At least, yeah. At the least, they could try to get maybe one run. And in the process, give themselves a little bit of confidence going into that second game that they were able to finally get on the board. Because you wouldn't want to go into the second game score scoreless, so... At least getting one run gives them a little bit more confidence for the second game. And the 2 1 now. And that one's going to go just, goes foul. just foul. Just foul. And this game is going to be the most runs allowed by UT in a game so far this season. Also, the most hits, too. Eight hits. Don't believe the Spartans have given up a, even more than five in the past five games. And that one's outside. Three and two now. Alexa Russo potentially her second base on balls, although I don't know. I'm thinking that she's swinging at this one. Why not? She does. You were right. It's a base hit. So Russo battles through the full count and a single to left field to start off the bottom of the seventh, and that'll bring up Lexi Chevalier. And I believe we're going to have a pinch runner. Pinch runner. Oh. So Mackenzie Allen comes to pinch hit. And she is now at first base. Chevalier, the batter, 0 for 2 in this game. And that one's fouled on the third base line. So the Spartans pick up their second hit of the game as Chevalier fouls that one back. Alexa Russo and Corinne Miner, the only two players in the UT lineup to get a hit so far this game off of Kristen Davis as the 0-2 now on the way to Chevalier. And that's going to be a line out to short. And so Chevalier is retired in the bottom of the seventh inning, and that'll bring up Stephanie Balmer. One out now in the bottom of the seventh. Keep in mind the Spartans do have a runner on first base. Pinch runner Mackenzie Allen over there. Even though Ball is over two today, a good defensive effort from her from the shortstop position. And another ball. Ballmer up two and zero oh here. Absolutely no breeze anymore as the American flag is limp in right center field as you see that one chopped it short over to second and they will not get the runner at first so two down now in the bottom of the seventh 
And if the Spartans are going to keep the game alive, it's going to be up to Emily Jansen as North Georgia is one out away from taking the first game of this doubleheader. Jansen is 0 for 2 in this game, and you see the first pitch to her, ball one. Number eight hitter in the UT lineup. Spartans down to the last out. If they get this last out and they lose, this will be it's a strike call. This will be the the last game that they, they were actually scored this was February twelfth against Auburn Montgomery in that doubleheader. And that was actually the last time they lost. As on a four game winning streak. Swing and a miss. Jansen down to her final strike. And let's see what Kristen Davis has here on the one two outside for a ball. Two and two on the way to Jansen and catches the corner for ball three. Steph Ballmer over at first. Trying to advance here. If Jansen can do something with this 3-2 pitch, she grounds it to third over to first and that'll be the ball game as the Spartans are retired in the bottom of the seventh. So the Nighthawks win it by a score of seven to nothing. The line score, seven runs on eight hits, two errors for the Nighthawks. The Spartans, no runs on two hits, five errors. So a complete game, two hitter two for hitter. Nighthawks pitcher Kristen Davis. Kristen Davis, yes. A great performance from her as we get to the second. Actually, the Spartans, they, they lose this game. They end the, f the four-game winning streak, but like you said, it's a clean slate. Let's get into the second game of this doubleheader, and let's see what the Spartans could do in the second game. So we will take a pause here in between games and bring you the second game of this doubleheader between number four ranked University of North Georgia and number 13 ranked University of Tampa. And do come back in approximately 15, 15 20 minutes. minutes. And we will have game two for you here on TampaSpartans.tv.